How are you? Doing good, doing good. Um, just getting off work. You got a workout in earlier, did some jujitsu. Recently just got my brown belt, so I'm working with my buddy who's a black belt. And we were just working on some uh, trapped arm Kimura um, positions from like side control, full mount, and standing. So it was a good day. Congratulations. I never made it past the white belt, so you got me beat there. Oh, man. <laughs> you got to get back there then. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I need you as a trainer. Is that something you're willing to do? Hey, man. Come to the UFC gym. I'm here. All right. So I'm a big sucker for romance. Your wife, Liana, made a post uh, saying that you two met at the gym. Tell me the story. Bring on the romance, man. Um, it wasn't even supposed to happen, dude. So I moved down here a couple of years back with my ex. And then uh, we ended up breaking up. Just, you know, it wasn't that we got tired of each other. It's like she didn't want to be down here anymore. I wanted to stay down here for my career, but I also just humbled. So she ended up moving back. And then um, later on, got in a different relationship, realized things weren't going to work out there. And I just took time for myself for a bit, man. I'm not just focused on myself, my training, you know, hanging out with my friends and uh, just going to work. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of happened. You know, she was at the gym. She was training there. And I, I didn't even really notice her until later on. This is one of those scenes where I just stuck to myself, dude. Like when I was at work, that was the one thing I always told myself is like, hey, keep it professional. Don't flirt with anybody. And I wasn't, a flirt. I wasn't the flirtation type because I didn't want – you know, people to get the wrong impressions either. I was just doing my job. I was training myself. I was training my clients, you know, uh, making money for myself so I can afford to live down here. Sacramento's expensive. I hate it. But uh, I like the training down here. The people down here are nice. But, you know, there's always going to be that part that misses home. And, you know, then her and I started talking. And, uh, yeah, it kind of just happened. Love it. Love it. Is it true that on your honeymoon you played Jenga? Yeah, it's all Jenga, and I won. I whooped her ass. <laughs> oh, Ryan, let me tell you something. There are exactly two things I'm good at in life. The first one is chess. The second one is Jenga. I have a record of, like, 20 wins, maybe, like, 25 losses in my lifetime, but that's 20 wins right there. When I come down to UFC gym, before we start training with one another, I'm going to school you in Jenga. Oh, dude, you're going to get your ass whooped, buddy. But um, I'm always down to play chess, so maybe one of these times – uh, you'll have to set up a chess board. I can just tell you what piece to move, and we'll have to play a friendly game. I'm always down to play. 100%. Now, when I destroy you, are you going to punch me in the face or, or, like, knee me in the balls or something? No, 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 no. I, I'm pretty good about losing at chess and stuff like that. I got you. All right, that's very good. So far, I'm 1-0 against celebrities. I played uh, an Olympic, I think, snowboarder not too long ago, and I schooled them. I didn't market it too much because I didn't, you know, didn't want to embarrass them or anything, but you're next on the chopping block. I mean, I'm down, man. I'm down to always have fun. <laughs> Talking about the gym, walk me through your first day, if you can remember, training at Team Alpha Male. First day I showed up, I uh, got there, and I was talking with Uriah. And I was still kind of getting new to the routine of the morning stuff. But it was more so like uh, getting just to know the guys, getting to train. I didn't try to make friends right off the bat. I was just there to train, you know. Kind of like missed my brother. I missed my homies from Lost Boys and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, I'm not here to be friends. I'm here to train hard, become a world champion, and shit like that. But it was just easy. Like, a lot of the guys are super cool. Everyone else there was there to train, too. And I'm one of those people who's – I'm not an introvert. I'm an extrovert. I like going out, making new friends, meeting new people. And so, like, the second day of there, that's how I did that. But um, then I was talking to your eye, and he's like, hey, so what's the uh, deal down here? I was like, actually, I'm looking for a job right now. He's like, oh, what do you do? I was like, well, I bartended. I used to train people, stuff like that. He's like, dude, I got the perfect job for you. I'm actually heading up there today. And so I brought my pink shorts in a work. I had a pink pair of shorts that I wear for working out sometimes. I'm just working out. And uh, I get there, I get to meet like James Irvin and the old manager, Bill. And they're kind of like, what the fuck? He's wearing pink shorts. Like, who is this guy? So I talked to James right off the bat. And he liked what he heard, you know, from what I had experience wise and what I could bring to the table here at the gym, you know, uh, you know, uh, if I was selling people for like personal training and stuff like that, because you know, if you're gonna hire a personal trainer, they gotta be able to bring something to the gym as a personal trainer. And I just told them, you know, um, how I had like a heart condition that I fight with, so I'm able to deal with heart conditions. I've dealt with sciatica pain, I've had like sprained ankles, you know, dislocations. I know how to help, you know, give people proper adjustments, proper training to re uh strengthen like weak ligaments or torn muscles, what they need to do for recovery, and how PT, not 
you know, like getting a massage and then taking two weeks off is the right way to do things. I, I believe in like getting back underneath that squat rack and doing like deadlifts and stuff like that, not using these machines to get back to 100% health. I believe in using barbells, you know, and then also doing high, end, uh, high endurance uh, workout as well, but also mix it in the grappling, the striking. So just the trick of the trade, man. I've always been interested in uh, being a trainer ever since I was like 10 years old. And as I got older, I did all my own research and then I had friends that were already in college for that stuff. So I'd sit there, help them with their homework. And then I'd be like their guinea pig for like the uh, research assignments they'd have to do and stuff. So I had a blast doing it. I've made a lot of uh, good family and friends out of it. You know, you get to, people say you can't pick your family. It's bullshit, dude. You get to definitely pick who your family and friends are. Like some of my best friends are, I consider them family more than I have like my actual family. So. Do you still have those pink shorts? I do. Do you ever wear them anymore? Or they're kind of like in a picture frame somewhere. No, I still got them. I wear them sometimes every now and then. You should wear that out. Uh, you should probably wear those in like your next walkout. Dude, that'd be sweet if I was allowed to, but not allowed to. So I'll see what the UFC can do about, uh, I guess, pink camo shorts or something. <laughs> 100%. I was reading an article uh, about you and your brother on MMA Junkie. Uh, it said in there that your your dad wanted you to be police officers. Other family members wanted you to uh, consider modeling. How close were you uh, to going in the modeling field? Dude, that's one of those ones where it's like, all these people are like, you should be an actor. You should be a model. When I was just a little kid. I was like, I just want to be an astronaut and shoot space aliens. Like, I'm a little kid. I'm only like five, six years old. Thinking, I don't know what I want to be. But then as I'm like, doing sports, I'm like, I want to play basketball. I want to play football. I want to wrestle. I want to do it all. I want to be the next Bo Jackson and stuff like that. Um, I think it's just the environment we grew up in and um, where we lived. It's like we just learned to be fighters at a very young age, and that had to do with, like, our background and our family history and stuff like that. And, you know, even, like, fishing and swimming and hunting and all that stuff. I can, be, I can sit right here and say, like, I've never got to shoot a deer, but – you know, I haven't needed to. Like, I'm not going to go kill an animal unless I actually have to. Am I down to go hunting with my friends? Of course I am. If we see something, we'll definitely take that shot. If we get it, awesome. We have deer meat for our family and friends. Um, If not, then, hey, there's always next time. But we don't just go hunting just to go kill. It's not where we're from. If you're going to go hunt, you're going to eat it. Well, if you uh, ever do, <laughs> if you ever do consider modeling, you hit me up uh, in my inbox. I've actually mastered the blue steel. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a damn good amateur model and you know what you could actually mesh modeling and mma together like i i was i was really putting some thought uh into this during my proud to come today as you're walking to the cage it's like a walkway you treat it like a walkway you're a model just like that brought those pink camo shorts and you got it right there you go well you know what i don't want to do about modeling what they're gonna be like hey you need to lose weight i'm like dude i only lose weight when i fight uh-uh hell no <laughs> nope not happening and then they'll be like, well, you got to look a certain way. And I'm going to tell them, no. And I've already, I'm one of the, like, I'm considered a conspiracy theorist by my family because I'm like, I'll shit on the government. I'll shit on Hollywood. I wanted to be an actor growing up. And I still want to, like, write movies and stuff. I don't even want to be in Hollywood anymore, though. I was like, as a kid, I was like, man, it'd be so cool to, like, be in a movie. But now you're hearing about all this Hollywood stuff and, you know, all, like, the, uh, the pedophile rings and stuff like that. And you're, it's just like. No, I hate them all. I hate every single one of them. Well, I've been reading a lot about you and your brother. As you said yourself, you definitely had a tough upbringing, but it seems as though you've always had each other. In August of 2020, fighting on the same Contender Series card, I'll put that into words. I know it's been, you know, a year or so, but what was that like? I feel like that'd be such a special experience. One of the greatest moments of my life. Again, I mean, my brother and I, we wanted to be, like, that was our goal when we started fighting was – to get into the UFC together at the same time. And who, who gets to say that you and your sibling on the same day got to win a fight and then, you know, your new boss tells you, hey, congratulations, you're in the UFC. It's like a lifelong goal. You watch these fighters growing up. You know, you get to see these guys. You idolize them. But then we got older. We quit idolizing these different fighters. We're like, now nah, fuck that dude. He's at 170. Oh, fuck him. He's at 185. Screw that dude. He's at 55. You start to realize these guys are people too. They're fighters, and everyone fights for a different reason. Um, so, like, I had somebody ask me, hey, you got to pick. Are you going to pick Ngannou or Sipe? And I was like, dude, it's a tough one because Sipe is such a good dude. And then you look at Francis Ngannou, it's like, look at how he came up. Like, 
he made his own story. He made his own life, and it was a hard path for him, but he did it. It's like, how could you not root for them both? So I'd like to see fights like that. I'd like to see fighters like that. Um, what I don't like to see is, like, fighters who have that fake persona because they're afraid of getting cut because they're not bringing anything more than, like, a win or two to the UFC and stuff like that. So we see a lot of this WWE mentality. It's like, just be yourself, dude. If you're an asshole, just be an asshole. If you're a good person, stay a good person. But don't wishy-washy, you know, don't flip back and forth. Yeah. But I did um, definitely one of the greatest moments of my life, being able to, like, just sit right there with my brother. And we're kind of, like, just all cheesing and smiles. We're like, what do we do? Like, who do we answer? What, what's going on? <laughs> you, you, you had uh, mentioned a second ago, a second ago reason for, for fighting. What is your reason uh, for fighting? Why do you do it? Oh, I grew up on Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball. So I wanted to be just like Goku as a kid. And Goku wanted to everybody. He said, hands up. Didn't care. Like, so I wanted to do. I just wanted to fight the best people. And I still do ask for the best opponents possible. So when I got that Nick Dolby fight opportunity, I knew he used to be in the UFC before they released him the first time. And then he had a good stint, I believe, with the uh, Cage Warriors. Yeah. He did good over there. And so they got him back into the UFC and I was like, I was super excited. And then I just overtrained and ended up getting myself injured, but that's still a fight I'm excited about. You know, that guy does not go in. He doesn't quit. He doesn't give up. He goes to try to put on a show and that's what he did. But it, it doesn't matter who they put up in front of me. If he doesn't want that fight, I'm down to fight somebody else. I'm just waiting on that call right now. Stylistically, you versus Nicholas Dalby would be absolutely incredible. I feel like that is fight the night written all over it. That's what a lot of people thought. Well, I certainly hope that it happens. Going back for a sec to that contender series fight, you and your brother fighting on the same card, is that something ideally that you'd like to continue doing? I know for your debut, you were also going to fight on the same card together. Is, is that something that – because I was kind of curious. When I was looking at that contender series card, you obviously fought first. He was the main event of that fight card. I feel like – for him watching you first, it would be pretty advantageous because you got that knockout. It gets him pumped. But I, I feel like there might be some, like, nerves be behind that a little bit. No, we're used to it. I mean, we wrestled together. So True. I've seen him lose wrestling matches. He's seen me lose wrestling matches. And I've seen him win big wrestling matches. And, yeah, that shit gets me pumped when I see him win. But if we see each other fighting, it's one of those scenes like, you got to fight too. So you got to keep the nerves out of it. But obviously, you, you know, you're going to be a little nervous because you want your brother to perform well. And that's the only thing I, I consider is I want my brother to perform well. Yeah. So it, it was unfortunate that in his fight with Sasha, he ended up tearing his labrum. Uh, I think in the first round, that's why in the second and third, like he wasn't really able to use his arm anymore. But no excuses aside, he went out there. He, uh, he fought his heart out and he kept going as, you know, as long as his body was willing to let him. But I would have loved to be on that same card. Yeah. And win or lose, I don't care. I just want to fight. Obviously, I want to win. I'm too stupid to lose. And that's why I try to finish my fights. I don't trust judges. I mean, we've seen a lot of fights where judges will have it one way, and you're sitting there thinking, what the hell? How do you, how do you call that? How do you call it that way? In what way possible? You can have a guy who wins a stand-up, and then the dude gets a last-second takedown. They're all, well, it was a close round, so we'll give it to the guy who got a takedown. It's like, he got his ass pieced up. Just like there's a guy who – might have landed one or two heavy shots, but he got controlled the rest of the fight on the ground and was ground and pounded. It's like there should be a clear winner versus, like, the clear, like, who won that round. Hey, if you don't know who won the round, don't pick a winner. That's why we have draws for a reason. Yeah, yeah. I truly do sometimes wish. Like, I see the necessity behind having judges, obviously, but sometimes I wish there was an alternative, and I'm not creative enough to, like, kind of, like, think of an alternative, but sometimes I feel like there has to be, like, a better way of doing it. I mean, I can tell you right now what it is. Fight until someone loses. Yeah, that would be interesting. Would you be down for that? Damn yeah, right, I'd be down for that. <laughs> I don't care how long it goes. I'd still go. That's crap. It changed <laughs> a little bit, but it's like, hey, if you go out there, you start beating the shit out of somebody, and it's past five minutes long, and the rep just has to let it go until the guy's either knocked out, submitted, or, you know, taps. Or their towel throws in the, you know, the corner throws in the towel. It's like, it's a fight. Why should there be a timeline? It is a fight. So a lot of these fighters, they're used to this idea of, hey, you won the first round. You won the second round. Every time I've had a fight going to the third round, I've told myself, I don't care if I won the first and the second round. 
I have told myself, these judges are pieces of shits. They're stupid. They don't deserve to be here. You got to go finish the fight. I refuse to fight and go to the judges. I, I, I hate judges. <laughs> as do I. They can certainly be annoying sometimes, and I'm just a spectator. As everyone is curious about, give us an update. I know you were, you were pretty badly injured, which is the reason for, for you having to pull out the Nicholas Dalby fight. Give us an update. Are you healthy now? I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling a lot stronger. I'm feeling healthier. Um, you know, still going through the motions on some things, like uh, just certain movements. But even then, it's like it doesn't affect me. Uh, I think the only thing that was affecting me at first was, like, uh, getting back into it. It just felt awkward. But now it's, I'm doing everything just fine. Okay. Good. You know, I, just, I need to make sure to get back into Alpha Male and Lost Boys more often, though. Just one of those things where it's like I'm, I've been so focused on my recovery. It's now to the point where I think I over-focus on the recovery. I feel strong. I feel great. I'm in shape. You know, if I do myths, I don't get tired fast. I can grapple for 15, 20 minutes in the gi without, you know, getting too tired. And then I can do, like, you know, some light sparring here and there. But now i got to pick it back up into more so, um, you know, more focused on the MMA aspects. My weight training program is doing great. My endurance is good. I'm running almost every day, and if I'm not running, I'm doing sprints or, you know, battle ropes and stuff like that. But the, uh, the strength is up there. The strength is great. I'm actually stronger now before then I got injured. The only thing I did wrong was I just overtrained. I was training hard three to four times a day instead of, hey, let's just break it down. Talk about the number four. Talk about the number four. I, and I, correct me if I misread this. You want to fight four times this year? Yes. That's a lot of times. I'm going to fight twice. So if I don't get a fight in May, uh, it sounds like I'm not going to, which I, I don't mind. You know, if I have more time to recover and get better prepared, cool, whatever. You know, there's, there's people who say there's too much preparation time. But to me, every day at a train is another day to get better. So there's never such thing to me as uh, enough preparation time. You can always have all the prep time in the world. Goku had to prepare, I think, three years for the androids. So if I got to wait three years to fight again, whatever, I'll, I'll just be better than I was you know, three years from then. <laughs> well, I certainly hope we don't have to wait three years to see you step in the cage. I'm very excited about you. And you had a phenomenal fight that I'm sure so it put you on a map in the Contender Series. For UFC fans, MMA fans who aren't as familiar with you yet, what should they expect to see from you while watching you compete? Always look for a finish. If you're going to bet on always look for me to finish a fight. Like I said, I'm, I'm not content. I can literally be up two rounds to none and know that if I get a takedown, I win the fight. I'm not going to look to just ride it out. I'm going to look to finish the fight. I want to prove I'm the better fighter. I don't want a judge to say, yeah, you won in our eyes. I don't want the fans to be like, yeah, he won in our eyes too. I had a 30-27 or 29-28. I want them to be able to, hey, Orion went out there and he still finished the fight. Lovely, lovely. Well, I cannot wait to see you step back in the cage. I know it's been a long day for you. I'm not going to take any more of your time. I'm going to leave the floor to you. If there's anybody you'd like to thank, make sure you do all the uh, social media plugins. Yeah, um, social media is just going to be at Galaxy Cozy for um, Instagram. If you want to add me on Facebook, I probably won't accept. I barely check it. Out. And if anything, I use it to troll my family and friends. Um, I hate politics because they're all a bunch of losers anyway that are never going to help us. And then um, Twitter, I'll barely chat to you guys. So if you message me on Twitter, don't bother. Just message me on Instagram. I'm more prone to check for, like, other stuff on there. Um, yeah, shout-out to my sponsors, um, Javier Rowe, Chiropractic, Grey Bush Metal. They're a local metal band from Humboldt County. So check them out, guys. Um, new, uh, new stuff hopefully coming soon. I got to talk to them and see what um, the deal is with that. I'm hoping. I, I can't wait. And then I know they have a – concert coming up in august in ukiah uh steph dalkey thank you for the doTERRA product uh, oils that just all natural product helps and it makes my water taste better and then um who else get right they're one of my biggest sponsors and biggest supporters so thank you guys for everything that you do for not just me and my brother but also for the youth back in humble uh del Norte county and then I just want to thank all my family and friends, uh, you know, Uriah Faber, James Irvin, Bill Roshman, Justin Wall, Brian Wilson. Uh, thank you for the uh, brown belt. And, and then all the guys at Team Alpha Mel, thank you for all the uh, coaches and the uh, guys there. I can't wait to get back in there with you guys. I'll get my ass back in there sooner than later, I promise. And then uh, family and friends back up with the, uh, Jim and Humble. Lost Boys, represent, guys.
time. Thank you to Iridium, Jason, and Jacob, guys. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. And then, uh, obviously, the wife. Can't forget the wife.